and legs inside the boat. And be sure to watch your children. Please do not use your photo flash or video lights until we reach the greenhouses. Thank you. Now, sit back, relax, and enjoy living with the land. For su seguridad, permanezca sentado con sus manos y brazos, pies y piernas dentro del barco y cuida a los pequeñitos. A manera de recordatorio, no tomar foto con flash y luz de video antes de llegar a Ninaldero. storm may seem violent and destructive to us, but to nature it's a new beginning in the cycle of life. Create the diverse living systems of our planet. created a very different, but no less beautiful, living system. And while this arid landscape may seem lifeless, it is very much alive. The plants and animals that have learned to survive in these harsh conditions make use of what little water they can find and avoid the scorching rays of the relentless sun. The American prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert, but over time, rainwater and nutrients gradually penetrated the hard surface of this land. Even the hooves of the mighty buffalo helped create the rich soil that would one day become home to the American farm. Of all the forces at work on the land, humans have had one of the most profound effects. The need to produce food for a growing world led to the enormous use, and sometimes overuse, of the land. In our search for more efficient ways to grow food, we often fail to realize the impact of our methods. to live with the land, discovering better ways to grow food that will assure both human and environmental well-being. Ladybugs and wasps to control pests. 
In Japan, we're learning that by adding compost of leaves and other plant material to our soil, we can reduce the need for fertilizers. In farmlands across America, we're learning that by plowing under vegetation containing natural fertilizers, we can enrich the soil. meet tomorrow's growing needs for food production, yet still respect the needs of the land? Some of the answers are being discovered just ahead. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and Nestle are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests, now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like bananas, cacao, coffee, and rice, are well known around the world. Others, like the jackfruit, fluted pumpkins, and dragon fruit growing here, represent the vast number of lesser known tropical plants. As we learn more about these crops, we discovered that many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. For instance, the unique looking dragon fruit is actually a member of the cactus family. The fruits are high in vitamin C, rich in antioxidants, and have a light, sweet taste. One day, these and many other lesser-known crops may be as popular as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. When we mention farming, you probably don't think of fish. But fish farming, or aquaculture, is an innovative way to increase harvests and protect wild fish populations. Tilapia, bass, and catfish are three popular crops raised by fish farmers around the world. In Asia, tilapia are often raised in rice paddies where the fish waste provides nutrients for the rice. This integrated growing system improves yields and reduces pollution. The American alligators on your right were once a wildered species. Raising alligators on farms has played an important role in decreasing pressures on wild populations. Nearly 30% of all fish consumed worldwide is raised on farms, making aquaculture an important part of our efforts to produce a bountiful harvest. Here at the land, we grow about 6,500 pounds of fish each year, many of which are featured in restaurants here at Epcot. This greenhouse is full of some of our biggest ideas. Giant pumpkins and winter melons are certainly impressive, but their real importance far exceeds their record-setting size. These supersized crops represent the best efforts of scientists and farmers to improve plant yields. Years of careful selection and crossbreeding results in plants that produce more food, are more resistant to pests, and can even grow in marginal climates. And it doesn't hurt that one nine pound lemon will make about a gallon of lemonade on a hot summer day. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like the ones you see here are a top priority for our researchers. These vertical growing systems increase airflow through the leaves which helps to reduce disease. Diseases and insects are two of the biggest challenges faced by farmers around the world. That's why we're using beneficial insects to help manage pest problems in our greenhouses. We are also growing plants using our novel nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. The system can save farmers money and help 
Here's something you don't see every day. Tomatoes growing on trees. These plants were originally developed by Chinese scientists. Tomato trees live longer and produce many more tomatoes. One of ours lived 16 months and produced over 32,000 fruits, a Guinness World Record. Much of the produce you see growing in our greenhouses is served in the restaurants here at the land. The future of agriculture includes some high-flying ideas like the ones you see here. We already grow plants without soil throughout our greenhouses. That technique is called hydroponics. Now we're trying out aeroponics. Water and nutrients are sprayed directly on the roots of the plants as they fly by. In our lab, scientists from the U.S. Department of Agriculture are working to develop dwarf pear trees. The fruit will be normal sized, but the smaller trees will be easier to grow and harvest. The goal of all these experiments is to discover new ways to better grow crops in even the harshest environments. Who knows? One day, we might even be able to grow food during extended space flights. These greenhouses represent just a tiny fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. Of course, growing better crops is just the first part of the story. Once harvested, these crops need to be handled with care on their journey from the field to your table. Around the globe, scientists from Nestle are dedicated to improving the quality and taste of the foods that the world enjoys and relies on. Working together, we can continue to find innovative ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then will we truly be living with the land. On behalf of Walt Disney World and Nestle, we hope you have enjoyed this unique journey through our living laboratory. Those of you interested in an even closer look at our greenhouses might consider the behind the scenes walking tour. It's a great experience for the whole family. The tour desk is near the entrance to Soren. Please keep your hands and feet inside the boat and remain seated.